I'm gonna go live on Facebook too, if that's okay. Yep. All righty, we are being live streamed as well. Uh, well, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Amy Loudermilk, uh, and I am the I manage Arts Builds programming. Um, it's been a minute since we've held a Friday community Zoom, so we're glad to see everyone back in the mix. Um, before we get started, uh, I wanted to take some time to remind you all of the opportunities happening with Arts Build. Um, in just a second, I'm going to have uh, Jules Jackson, our uh, programs assistant, jump on and talk to you about our spaces survey. Uh, but we do have a Regia grant uh, uh, information session uh, coming on uh, July 27th at 6 p.m. That's posted to our Facebook uh, page. This round uh, for our Regia grants is geared toward identifying our artists who identify as Native American, Asian American, or Pacific Islander. So again, that's July 27th at 6 p.m. Uh, Melissa Aston, uh, who's in charge of uh, that giving, uh, who is Artsfield's new manager of grants and community engagement, has and will reach out to some of you for input on what Artsfield provides for shared services. So please be on the lookout for that opportunity to provide input. We're looking for lots of input right now. So if we reach out to you, uh, that means uh, we, we value everyone's opinion. So if you've got something to say about it, reach out to us, okay? So with that, um, Jules, you want to jump in and talk to us about the spaces survey real quick? Certainly. So essentially, ArtsBuild is assembling um, a database, a searchable database of um, spaces here in town, organizations that offer um, different types of spaces and different types of resources that individual artists, as well as other organizations can use for their projects. So this would include, for example, like a gallery space, um, an indoor outdoor space, rehearsal space, an auditorium or a theater, as well as resources like um, artist easels, for example, um, recording equipment, sound equipment like a sound system, um, anything you can think of. One of our uh, respondents um, so far has also um, listed, for example, like mesh walls that artists can use to hang their artwork at festivals, um, anything like that. So if your organization offers any spaces or um, any resources that can be rented or reserved, um, we would really like greatly appreciate it if you could respond to our Google survey just so that we can start assembling that database um, and kind of share the resources that we have here in town with um, other artists. So I'm gonna uh, pop the link to that in the chat um, right there. All right, and so if you are here today, if you are alive and breathing, we value your input. So please um, jump in the chat there and click that link uh, and open the tab up uh, for you to respond to later. So thanks, Jules, appreciate that. Yeah. Thank um, you. So to sign up for any of the opportunities that I've mentioned, um, you can feel free to email me at amy at artsbuild.com. Uh, Jules, if you don't mind popping my email in the chat, I'd appreciate it. Or you can check out ArchsBuild's uh, social media where you'll find uh, the registration links to everything that I've discussed. But we're always here to answer your questions um, and all questions are important. So, um, so as it is uh, ArchsBuild's mission to build a stronger community through the arts, we must advocate for the mental health of our arts and culture community. That's why today we've asked Monica Burke and Carol Meredith to meet with us and discuss opportunities for training that CHI Memorial has made available to the Hamilton County community. Considering the past few years, we've all come across an article or two that describes how one can strengthen mental health through the arts, but as creatives and arts advocates, we need to know how to recognize declining mental health in our own community. As the saying goes, you can't help others if you don't help yourself. Today, Monica and Carol bring us an overview of the training available to you or your organization to make sure our local arts community is strong within itself, as we provide the outlets that many turn to in improving their own mental health. Throughout the presentation, feel free to chime in with questions about the curriculum our CHI Memorial certified uh, mental health first aid instructors provide, 
uh, during a typical two hour session. Hold on just a second, I'm manning the waiting room as well. Um, so additionally, Artsfield is interested in providing a training session, one of these two hour training sessions that these ladies are gonna to talk to us about to our local arts and culture community. If you are interested in going through a training with Monica and Carol, there will be a Zoom survey at the end of our session. So we can collect the names of those interested in participating with Arts Build in not only mental health training, uh, but also CPR and uh, emergency preparedness training. Uh, we'll also do announcements at the end. So if you are an organization uh, who has something coming up that you wanna notify our community about, please go ahead and get those notes ready. Um, and with that said, uh, I hand the program over to Miss Monica and Miss Carol to tell you about the work they do in the typical mental health training session. And for those of you joining us late, we are recording, we are live on Facebook. So if you have to jump off or you were late for any of uh, the presentation, you can catch that on our YouTube page uh, shortly after the presentation is finished. So ladies, I hand the floor to you. <clears throat> thank you so much, Amy, and good morning, everyone. And thank you, Amy, for this opportunity to share this information. As you said, with mental health, especially with the onset of the pandemic, we know that there is really a need for our community around getting educated to know, first of all, to kind of break the stigma associated with mental health and realize that it is more common than we realize. So one in five adults in the United States will experience a mental health or substance misuse uh, challenge in their lifetime. So we're gonna uh, start the presentation, but let me also, uh, I am one of the instructors, and then we have Carol Meredith. I'm going to let her introduce ourselves, and then we're going to go ahead with the presentation. Thank you again for this opportunity. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Carol Ann Burton Bolden. Boom, 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 Meredith. I have a long, long name. And I'm drinking coffee, which I really don't need, but I because I have lots of energy in the morning. So if that bothers you, I'm sorry. Um, I've had people tell me, bring it down a notch or two. But well, it's only an hour, so I bet you can get through it. I am one of the instructors for um, the Mental Health First Aid training program. Um, Amy said that it's a two hour program, training program. And actually, there's two hours online pre work. And I'm sure Monica will probably talk about it when we get into it. And the two hours pre work, right. Uh, and that's online self paced and then seven hours instructor-led training. So it's an all day, but I'm telling you, it's packed full of information and Monica will give you a lot of information about that. So what I'm going to share with you, I will go um, share with you why it's needed, what's so important about this program and, and this, the challenges and the barriers and what's wrong that's causing us to need mental health first aid so desperately in our communities and across the country. So is everyone seeing the screen that I'm sharing? Boom, boom, boom. So boom, boom, boom is my expression of excitement and approval. So if you hear that, I just want you to know where it's coming from. I get excited and I say, boom, boom, boom. That's, I gave uh, Amy a boom, boom, boom. It was sort of silent, Amy. I didn't want to scare you with it. When um, you sent the first email about making this presentation, it's like, boom, 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 we need to get there. So this is just our welcome screen. Our agenda for today is this, just four dot points here. Dot points, not bullet points, right? The language around mental health is very important. Our language in general is important. So um, we may talk about some stuff and use terms that are a little bit, maybe a little bit unfamiliar, but we're trying to be more positive with the terms that we use. So I'll talk about what's wrong in the barriers, and Monica will talk to you about the program itself. This is informal. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat, but if you want to raise your hand, if you know how to use the um, Zoom features, that's fine, or just come off of mute and say, hey, Carol, I have a question about that, or Monica, may I ask you a question? 
and we'll be happy to entertain us. Boom, boom, boom. Yay. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> okay, so with the mental health first aid training, each participant will receive an online manual. And in the manual, there's a lot, there's a lot of beautiful artwork created by um, members of our communities that have experienced, lived experience with mental health or substance misuse challenges. And so I'm just featuring these two pieces of art today. I am not going to pretend to know a lot about art. I don't. I'm married to uh, an artist and he, he tries to get me to see stuff, but some people have it, some people don't. And I just see pretty pictures or disturbing pictures. Right, but I, I'm not really good into reading into what the artist's saying, so I just put that disclaimer out there. Okay, so we're going to start talking about what's wrong. So here, stigma is huge. Monica talked about stigma, and I'm going to tell you this: this slide talks about uh, African Americans and how 80% of us are concerned about the stigma when it comes to mental health challenges. Um, and I live with a mental disorder. I've been diagnosed with depression, been on depression medication for several years now, and I talk about it, but it makes some people uncomfortable, especially some of my family members got uncomfortable because of the stigma around it. But that's a part of our role as mental health first aiders to make it normal conversation. And that helps to break the stigma. What else is wrong? Let's see what else is wrong. In the LGBTQ plus questioning community, the rate of mental health challenges is double, two to two and a half times more than in a heterosexual community. And when it comes to attempting suicide, you can look at those numbers there. I'm not one that's going to read every word off of every slide. So I give you a highlight and then leave the slide up for a little bit. But this is when we're talking about what's wrong is we're talking about why we really need to educate ourselves around mental health and substance misuse challenges. Because there is a lot, people, people are really being challenged. I try not to use the word suffering, but people are really being challenged daily because of mental health challenges and don't know how to get the help or because of the stigma or because of the discrimination, it's hard to get the help or because of a lot of other barriers. We'll talk about some of those barriers as well. Any questions about this slide? And Monica, you know how we, we do. If you want to add anything, if I miss anything, feel free to chime in. Okay, this slide shows, and there's, some, there's an important word on this slide. It talks about how African-Americans make up about 13% of the population. And of those 60 per 16%, I'm sorry, 16% report having mental illnesses in the last year. 16% of African-Americans reported having. We just saw on that previous slide, right, about the stigma. So when you think about this, if 16% reported having mental illnesses over the past year, you think that number is actually higher or lower? Those actually experiencing mental health challenges. Absolutely, Angela, thank you. Boom, 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 it's actually higher because 16% of those reported having mental illnesses. Most of us don't report that. Most of us don't seek help for that. A lot of times what we find is that mental health challenges manifest in physical ailments. And we may see a doctor about headaches and upset stomachs and back aches, but never talk about the mental challenges. So most of those are go unreported in our community. So what's wrong again? What leads to stress and anxiety? This is not all inclusive. None of the information we're gonna show you is all inclusive, but it gives you a picture of what some of the leading causes are. Being poor, 
is a leading cause of anxiety. And you, flip, you finish hooked on phonics, you can read the rest of it. Now we're gonna talk about age groups and what's wrong. The, the statistics that I'm going to share with you are all pre-COVID. And as Monica said, these numbers have skyrocketed, has, has, well, she talked about COVID, but these numbers have skyrocketed since COVID. And so these pre-COVID numbers with our young people, with our children, those un, 18 and under, 12% or almost 13% have diagnosable mental uh, challenges in any given year, almost 13%. And it usually begins in early childhood. This is trauma is the leading cause of mental health challenges. And most of those, most of the trauma, and you'll see as I go through all of the other age groups, most of that trauma is caused in childhood and it's unresolved. Six being the median age for the onset of anxiety disorder, we really need to pay attention child, to our children. Age six is the median age. Four-year-olds are exhibiting signs of anxiety. Three-year-olds are. And 15 being the median age for substance use disorder. College students, we talked about the African-American community. Most of our African-American college students don't get any education about mental health before college. And then of all of our college students, 25% of them experience uh, or report having suicidal thoughts. That's over all the cultures and races and ethnicities. One in four, that's huge. Um, I won't read all of them, but I will, I'm gonna pause here and, and kind of summarize these two groups. Since the pandemic, the suicide rate for ages, gonna go a little bit beyond this age group, the suicide rate, is, suicide rate for ages 10 to 34 has tripled. It's huge from ages 10 to 34, that age group has tripled in completed suicides. The state of Colorado has recognized this and the state of Colorado has issued a state of emergency for youth mental health. Because according to CDC guidelines, pre-COVID suicide was the second leading cause of death, which is really high, right? Second leading cause of death for um, children and adolescents. In the state of Colorado is the first leading cause of death. That's the reason that state has issued a state of emergency for the youth mental health. This is serious. Continuing with what's wrong, among our adults, as Monica said earlier, one in five of us will experience a mental challenge in any given year. And during our lifetime, almost half of us will. Being non-judgmental is really important when it comes to being a mental health first aider. And we talked about trauma. When you look at this next dot point under adults, the last one, 90% of women with alcoholism were sexually abused or suffered severe violence from parents. And I link that to being non-judgmental because it's so easy for society to look at someone who is experiencing or living with a substance misuse or alcoholism, alcohol use disorder and judge them. But most of the time that ties back to some type of childhood trauma. Our senior adults, this age group has also tripled in completed suicides since the pandemic. All age groups have seen a significant increase, but the seniors and that age group 10 to 34 has actually tripled. The suicide rate, and I heard um, Amy mention Native American 
uh, program coming up um, in the future. Among Native Americans, the suicide rate is triple the non-Native of the um, non-Native American communities. It's huge. What does mental health challenges lead to? It can lead to high school dropouts. It can lead to relationship breaks, or breakups. It can lead to incarceration. When you look at these, this graph here, you see how, and this is for a lot of reasons. It's not just because of mental health. There are a lot of reasons that cause the um, disproportionate number of African-Americans and Hispanics to be incarcerated over the fight. But mental health is one of the leading causes for that. Barriers. So we talked about what's wrong and what's causing and, and why um, and some of the numbers around the different age groups. So what are some of the barriers to getting mental health care? So I'm gonna leave this time, I'm gonna leave this screen up for a little bit. I'd like for you all to talk to me. What do you think some of the barriers are? Money. Money, absolutely. It's, it's not cheap. Anybody else? Thank you, Amy. <clears throat> Carl, I just wanted to add here in Chattanooga, there is a shortage of providers as well as a waiting list like to get in to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist, there's a six month wait. So there is also, we're, we're dealing with that as well here in Chattanooga. So you put that on top of everything else that's going on. So, all right. Another big barrier, right. And, and, and the whole country is saying that, Monica. Thank you for mentioning that. Jenna, you came off of mute. Were you going to add something? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I actually recently started my first nursing job as a nurse at Park Ridge Valley on the adult campus, and not just providers, but also like nurses, like we can't seem to keep beds open and we have a huge wait list because not only is there not like doctors, but things like mental health care techs or nurses, we're also having a big shortage. And so to provide safe patient care, we can't, you know keep enough uh, staff to take care of all the patients we have. Wow, thank you for sharing that, Jenna. Yes, I can see that. And, and that leads to the stress of those who are experiencing the challenge and need help, but it also is, is a stress to the healthcare providers, right? And, and the nurses, right? That, that can be very stressful and lead to mental challenges. Oh yeah, there's there's been huge burnout with bedside nurses in every specialty just because there's a nurse shortage everywhere. Right, right. Thank you for sharing. And that can lead to compassion fatigue and just a lot of other challenges. Thank you. Does anybody else want to share? I would pose that maybe like incarceration uh, rather than uh, rather than help is a barrier. Often, how many times? Are people just sent to uh, a residence into jail rather than getting the help that they, they really need? Absolutely, Stratton. Thank you. Thank you. So there are a lot of barriers to getting help. Uh, and some people don't even know what help is available, don't even know where to start. Don't know that some, some people who have coverage don't know that they have coverage or EAP programs that will pay for um, mental health professionals or counseling. Yeah, so there are a lot of barriers. The stigma is a barrier. The inequality, inequality of care is a barrier. Thank you for engaging. Culture can definitely be a barrier. We talked about it in the um, African-American community and, and the LGBTQ plus questioning community and, and with the Native American community, but culture is, is, there are lots of buckets for culture. And again, this is not all inclusive, but this gives you an idea of different 
pockets of culture and how there can be barriers. The older generation is less likely to seek mental health care than, younger gener than the younger generation. Younger generation is usually more open to talking about mental health challenges, but not necessarily seeking the help for it. And so that's just a quick overview of why we need mental health first aid training, why it's so important that people are educated on, on um, mental health challenges. Monica is now going to talk to you about the program that we have that addresses this. Thank you, Carol. Okay, so the mental health, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, the mental health first aid, it is the program that we use to kind of teach people when they notice that an individual is experiencing a mental health challenge or a substance misuse challenge, noticing the signs and symptoms. We do not diagnose, but we notice things. And this is an early intervention program. And I really want to stress how important early intervention, as Carol mentioned earlier, a lot of these illnesses or the trauma starts in childhood and they are unresolved for various reasons. You know, all the barriers that we have discussed thus far. But I want to just kind of give a little history behind the mental health first aid, how it originated. So it started in uh, 2000 in Australia. So it came and was introduced to the United States in uh, 2008. And so in addition to adults, so these are adults that teach or work with other adults, they also added a youth component. And so these are adults that work with youth and just educating them on uh, the mental health signs and symptoms to some of the childhood, um, early childhood uh, situations or uh, challenges or disorders. So um, I mentioned all that just to say this program is actually in 25 different countries. And we are so excited and appreciate that, you know, it came to the United States because what this class basically does, it educates you on, first of all, the basics. What is mental health? You know, who is at risk? You know, some of the risk signs and, and um, as Carol has already talked about some of the barriers, you know, what is that person, that individual in a crisis or non-crisis situation? So the class goes in detail in regard to that as well. Okay, so Carol, we'll go to the next screen. So this is basically what you would learn in the class. Um, the risk factors and the warning signs associated with the mental health and substance uh, misuse challenges. Uh, we'll give information about some of the disorders such as depression, anxiety, talking a lot about trauma since that's one of the leading causes of mental health challenges. We'll talk about psychosis and also substance misuse. Uh, in the um, program, and this is the background of the program, is there is an action plan. And the purpose of that action plan is to help you develop your skill sets, how to start the conversation, how to listen non-judgmentally, how to give reassurance and information, and then what are some of the resources that are available in your community. So it does a really good job of educating you on those different things. And then one of the things that we also do is we challenge our participants to research your particular area because actually we have been teaching of uh, participants all over the United States. We actually have had a few people outside of the country who have joined our class. And I wanna just, 
sent a shout out to CHI Memorial Hospital because what they're able to do is they are our they are our sponsors. So we're able to offer this class to community members free of charge. And that's including books and all of that, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I just wanted to kind of go over what you would learn in, the, uh, in this training. Okay, so I just basically talked a little bit about the action plan. So this is more detail. So the first thing that we're gonna always assess is for the risk of suicide and harm. Like I said, we will go into much detail about each one of these action items so that you will have a clear understanding how to start the conversation. And as Carol said, language is so important. Like we don't say commit suicide, we say die by suicide because we wanna keep our language as positive as possible. Because when you say commit, you think about the word commit. What do we commit? We commit sin, we commit robberies. So we no longer use that. We use the word die by suicide. And as Carol has already said, the suicide rate since the onset of the pandemic has greatly increased. Um, it's so much going on so fast that it's hard to keep up with the latest statistics around uh, what some of those challenges are. But we do know, you know, from our babies, our children, up to our seniors, uh, there has been a great increase in the need of education, one thing, and then also you know, seeking the help that they need, getting the appropriate help, which can also, as we talked about, can be a challenge. Okay, so a little bit more about the curriculum. This is, we are now into our second uh, curriculum uh, update. Originally, the original um, update came out when we started in 2008 in in the United States. And then in 2019, they did an upgrade. And one of the things that I really appreciate about the new curriculum is that it talks about uh, uh, <clears throat> self-care. And I think that's really important, just as it was mentioned earlier about some of the challenges the nurses and and, and mental health professionals are experiencing around burnout and different things like that. It is really important that you're taking care of yourself when you're trying to take care of others. It can be very challenging. So um, one of the things that the course also goes in detail is your role as a mental health first aider. So this course after you complete the training, you will get a certification for three years that um, you will be considered a mental health first aider. And we will go in, like I said, a lot of the roles as a mental health, uh, what your role is, what your role is not, uh, identify some of the impacts of uh, mental health challenges on your well-being here in the United States. I will tell you with this program, everything, every statistic that we talk about is evidence-based. So it has been researched uh, and then researched about uh, some of the statistics. Also, another thing that's really important with the mental health is that recovery is possible. Now, this is an early intervention program. So the earlier that you can get the appropriate help, the better the recovery will be. It doesn't mean that you won't recover, but the more you prolong getting that help that you need, you're gonna start developing in most cases some unhealthy coping strategies, which may be substance misuse or it could be just, you know, a lot of different things, overeating, not sleeping enough. It's just a, a multitude of things that can occur if you don't get the treatment that you need. 
Uh, it also talks about how important your safety is and privacy when it comes as a mental health first aider. And um, there are some exceptions when it comes to privacy and that being in the case of a risk of suicide and harm. We're not able to keep that private, but any other conversations that is not a crisis, a non-crisis can also, you know, definitely remain uh, private and confidential. So the program really teaches you how to identify some of those signs and symptoms. So we will talk about particular illnesses, what are some of the signs and symptoms and how it just trains you to start being more aware. And one good example is around suicide. One of the questions when we get ready to discuss that topic is, are there warning signs? And we know that there's always exceptions to the rule, but in most cases, there are many signs and warning signs leading up to suicide. But if you don't have that knowledge, then it may be harder for you to notice what they may be. And here again, this is one of the things that the course teaches you is uh, how to get more familiar with some of those signs. Okay, so uh, just continuing on, like I said, this is an early intervention. Um, the earlier you intervene, especially with the child and around trauma, the better it will be. Um, also, we talk about how to apply the different steps, kind of help you with your language, how to get started, how to um, uh, show, we talk about worsening signs and symptoms, early signs and symptoms, we talk about crisis situations, and then we talk, like I said, we talk in a lot of detail about self-care and how it's important as you, as a mental health first aider, to make sure that you're, you're properly taking care of yourself as well as you help others. Okay, so Carol and I, uh, we are instructors, we are able to teach adults who work with other adults. We are able to teach um, adults who work with youth and we also teach seniors. So the senior can be anyone, you know, I'm considered a senior now. Um, I may be uh, trying to get out of that, but uh, She's in I am in that. She's in <laughs> I am in <laughs> denial. <laughs> I got the gray hair and everything to prove that. But um, here again, it just talks about in detail uh, those different programs and the really, I really uh, get excited when it comes down to the youth because we know that this is usually the origin of some of these challenges and just to be educated and aware of what they are is really important. Okay, so I just wanted to just kind of let you know, as I already said, that this is an international um, training course. And some of the superstars that have really gotten involved is you have uh, Lady Gaga. She is one of the big supporters where she works with youth. And um, her program uh, is, is really good because it really helps the children, you know, help each other as well. So we appreciate her and her promoting the program. And also um, our previous first lady, Michelle Obama talks about the importance as well of the mental health first aid course. She, both of them has, participated in the course, taken the course, and are now considered mental health first aiders. So we are very grateful to all the people that have gotten involved. Okay, so this is what you get and just want to kind of talk about the expense associated with the class. As I said previously, 
CHI Memorial Hospital allows us with our community members to uh, offer the course free of charge. But if there's a situation where we have an employer with 50 or more employees, there may be a, a charge associated with those type of organizations. And now we have uh, taught many companies here in Chattanooga, educated their staff about um, this course as well. So what it entails, so you will get a online manual. Uh, we are able to teach the course uh, what we call blended, which is it is it includes a two hour pre-work as well as with the virtual. There is a two hour pre-work and then there is a, a seven hour with the virtual uh, as well as the uh, blended. There is a seven hour uh, instructor led course and it's not done in the, on the same day. But like the manuals, if you had to pay for the manuals, they are $18.95, which they have increased now to more than that. The blended um, course is also, Carol, do you know what that number is? I can't, uh, uh, with the X. I think it is. Okay, okay. For, to take, because we have to pay for the seats as well uh, for you to join the class blended or um, virtual. And then the supplies as well. So um, one, uh, one new first aider, what the total cost is, will probably be $170. And now this is what we originally started with. And as we know, everything has gone up. But if we were charging individual, that's what the cost will be. And also to become a new instructor, it originally started out at $2,200 to train an instructor. Now it's $3,000, uh, the latest information that I saw. So that being said, it's just um, so awesome that CHI Memorial Hospital can um allow us to present this to our communities. Now, when I say community, I'm talking about our teachers. I'm talking about, um, you know, just regular individual neighbors. I'm talking about seniors. I'm talking about anybody in the community is who we're talking about that can take the class individually. I am uh, very pleased to uh, announced that Carol and I have been able this uh, past year to teach over 620 plus participants this course. And that really makes me excited because that means they're educated about mental health, um, the signs and symptoms, what to do, what not to do. And so that increased the advocates for mental health that will in turn, break the cycle with stigma, break the cycle of people not getting the appropriate help that they need. So um, here again, we take our hats off and we salute CS, uh, CHI Memorial Hospital for their generosity. Boom, boom, boom to CHI. And Monica, I'm not taking all, I just want to say it's been over a thousand. Oh, okay. Yes, doing virtual. Boom, boom, boom. Right, right. Yes. Including the virtual classes. Yes. So we do offer it in person and um, the virtual as well. So thank you, Carol, for that update. That is awesome. So if you're asking yourself, well, Monica and Carol, what do we need to do to sign up for this class? What you would do is uh, email us at C-H-I-F-A, C-H-A-T-T, Wait a minute, G what did you just say? C H F A C H A T T at G. Wait a minute, wait a minute, C H what? C H F A no. what? M H F A. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you so, guys read it at the bottom because Molly needs her glasses. <laughs> I do. Ready for the weekend. She ready for the weekend. I am, Amy. Thank you. Amy, so, yes. she's in denial. You know she's a senior <laughs> citizen and she's not wearing her glasses. Let's be real about this. <laughs> I know. But that is our email address. And then we will give you details 
about how to sign up and enroll for the course. We will be off the month of July and we will start back up with courses beginning in August. So and just July like is you. our self-care month. So we really know the importance of self-care and we, we absolutely and we're looking right. forward to that as well. Over a thousand participants have taken the course. So yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Okay, so what questions do you have for Carol and I? Well, I okay. was, uh, as, as people are, are coming up with their questions, I just wanted to relate because I'm seeing lots of names in here. Um, and if you saw the email that I sent, I provided all of the flyers uh, that Miss Carol sent me for uh, the adult program, for the youth program, and for uh, the program for senior citizens. And I know um, there are several folks on here uh, who work with youth. So if I need to send you that flyer as well, because these ladies do provide a training specifically for the youth, um, as well as uh, specialized for senior citizens. And as a reminder, um, when uh, we get finished with our questions, I am gonna have, I'm gonna send a survey out uh, via Zoom uh, for you all to answer, to let us know your interest in um, any of these emergency first aid trainings. Thank you, Amy. So, <clears throat> Amy, are you going to read the questions from the chat or how, how would you like to do this? I don't see any questions in the oh, chat. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, um, I, I do know uh, one person did send me a direct message and ask if Artsville had any plan to host this training, and we do. Um, we just need to know uh, who, who is interested and who uh, we need to target with emails and dates and, and all that good stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, boom, boom, boom. Yes, yes. We look forward to it. Look forward to it. Absolutely. Okay. So, oh, Amy, I just wanted to also add through the course, there is a lot of artwork that is uh, shown from individuals who have had lived experience. And when I tell you that is one, that artwork is the most beautiful artwork that I've ever seen. So um, I'm really happy that the curriculum does include that, that uh, artwork. So glad about that. Okay. All right, well, while we wait for questions, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the survey. It's just two questions. Um, so hopefully everybody here can, can give us some answers. They're yes or no. I think the first question has a third. Uh, response option. So I'm going to launch it right now. If you would just take a second and answer those two questions for me. And if you have a question to pose to these ladies, please feel free to do so here or if you're a little shy, uh, we have that email address. Thank you, Jonathan, for posting that in the chat. That's very helpful. While they're answering that, those questions, Amy, I'd like to say, I'm so glad that you're offering a CPR uh, certification as well. I, I have CPR certification, I have been certified for over 20 years and I've never had to use it. And I'm glad, I'm grateful for that. I, I teach fitness classes and I tell people all the time, I've only had to practice on a dummy. So don't be the next dummy to pop, pass out of my class. But what I'm, the, the reason I bring that up is it's not, not to say that it's not important to be certified, have that certification because it absolutely is. But as a certified mental health first aider, you always have an opportunity to use it. If not for no other reason than just to help break the stigma. But there are so many of us with mental health challenges, you will have a chance to use it. You don't have to worry about your skills getting getting um, rusty. And also, I just wanted to add, as far as who we will do a class for, it can be your church, it could be a group of your family members, it could be your sorority brothers and sisters, it could just, not just for uh, companies, we will do it because this is so important 
to us to get this education to the community that we are willing to really work with anyone uh, if you want to get some uh, individuals together for the training. I will tell you, as far as the companies with 50 or more uh, employees and you have a need, uh, we will drop the charge from being 170 to $100 per person with a, min a minimum of 15 participants per class. So just in case you kind of want to get uh, those numbers together, but if you come as a community individual, uh, then it will be free of charge. We do have some Pacific counties. Um, previously before, uh, well, this is effective as of July the 1st, we will not be able to offer this course to participants all over the United States. It's going to be specifically to the state of Tennessee and Georgia. And then on top of that, there are some Pacific counties that we're able to train in as well. And when you reach out to us about that information, we'll make sure that we also include what those individual counties are because we are getting uh, quite a few requests now. So the classes, I will tell you, they fill up very quickly. So if that's something that, you know, you wanna be a part of this uh, movement to get educated, I really encourage you to do that. So you will be better informed and better able to, uh, not only just to assist yourself, but to assist others. Um, and Jonathan, you you had a great question uh, that if uh, those of you who aren't looking in the chat, Jonathan asked uh, if there was uh, if they cover identifying a misdiagnosis. And thank you, Miss Carol, for for that response. Uh, the course is not necessary. It's not about diagnosis that that needs to be provided by a mental health professional with uh, the uh, with uh, all the alphabet at the end of their name. Yes. Uh, so this is specifically for if you notice someone or come across someone in distress, this is this is how you learn to respond to that. And is, is that that's correct, isn't it? That is. Yes. Okay. And not necessarily even in distress. I mean, you do want to do cover in crisis, but early intervention and worsening. So just just even little things. Right. Before they get worse into in distress. Yes. And, and I'm glad and, you know that you put the information out there about the Narcan training mm -hmm. as well really important. Thank you, Jenna. Um, and uh, uh, shameless uh, shout out to, to Jenna, who was one of my former students. I taught <laughs> Jenna when she was in high school. So right. talk about aging yourself, Jenna is um, now a nurse. Um, she's also a very gifted artist. That's awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. I'll give a quick shout out to my husband. I, I mentioned earlier that he's an artist. He, he taught art in, in the school system for a long time. And now he's working at Hunter Art Museum as oh. security guard. Okay. And because he knows so much about the art, he's walking around telling people about it. And they're like, aren't you security? <laughs> Just <laughs> freaking people out. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, well, Y'all, we've got about eight minutes. So there's a few of you who are finishing up the survey. Um, does uh, any of our arts organizations or artists who are present uh, have anything that you would like to, to share with the community who's here right now? No oh, announcements. Everybody really is ready for the weekend. Yes. Well, without any announcements, um, I do uh, invite the organizations who are present or if you are an artist who is having an exhibition or displaying your work somewhere or have the opportunity to host an arts field staff person. We are conducting our arts and economics survey. That survey, um, 
is an in-person survey, so we would need to be present. Uh, we will be uh, present at, on Saturday evening uh, at the uh, Chattanooga Theater Center with the Festival of Black Arts and Ideas uh, for the uh, James Baldwin uh, performance that they have. They've got some uh, poetry going on. I think, is Miss Marsha here? Thought I saw her name, but she might have had to jump off. Um, Oh, she did. Uh, well, uh, Marsha Mills was in charge of that, but uh, we will be there conducting that survey. So if you have an opportunity like that for us to be present and conduct that arts and economics survey, uh, we would certainly appreciate that opportunity. Um, and you can feel free to email Melissa, and I will put that here in the chat, melissa at artsbuild.com. Um, she is our manager of grants and community engagement, so uh, we would love to engage her more in the community uh, by having her be present for that. So, well, with that, um, I, I guess, ladies, Monica, Carol, anything else we need to cover in the next five minutes? No, <clears throat> other than we uh, look forward to seeing you in class. Yes. <laughs> and I know I will be in touch with you all about scheduling that. Um, so with that, everybody, I hand you back five minutes of your Friday. Enjoy your weekend and stay cool and save gas money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy, again. Thank you. All right. Look to hear from you guys. Boom, boom, Bye-bye. <laughs>